Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about an easy problem from Lead Code. The problem name is Fair Candy Swaps. Okay. So Alice and Bob's have different total number of candies. You are given two integer array, Alice size and Bob size, where Alice size i is the number of candy of the ith box of the candy that Alice hold, whereas Bob size j is the number of candies of the j box of the candy that Bob has. Okay, so I'll just take you the input as well that Alice size has, you can assume that these are different candy boxes. Okay, one candy box is of size one, another candy box is of size one. So Alice has two candy boxes of size one. Similarly, Bob has two candy boxes of size two. Got it? So now they have these type of candy boxes. Since they both are friends, they like to exchange one candy box. Okay, one candy box will transfer the Bob to Alice and Alice will transfer it to Bob. Now, they want to do that such that they have the they both has a total amount of same candy okay so the total sum of the candy boxes the value of these candy boxes whatever you can say will become equal after that one exchange okay now you just have to tell that what is the value that should be given by alice and what is the value that should be given by bob so that eventually they have the same number of candies and uh, it is guaranteed that at least one answer like this now i can do this step problem uh, the first thing which comes to my mind is okay uh, they have different candies, but eventually they will reach to same candies. Same candies mean a middle of whatever candies they have. So let's say one will have more candies, one will have less candy, and they will come to the middle. So what you can, what is the middle value? You can directly get out at what value they will eventually reach when they have equal candies. So what you can directly do is just sum all the value of candies Alice has and Bob have divided by two. You will get what is the amount of candy both should be having in the end of the exchange so that they both have same number of candy. I hope you get the point. So what we'll do is we'll first find out the sum of all the uh, elements of Alice and Bob and divided by two so that we, we got to know what is the final lead of Alice and Bob after doing this exchange. Now they have to do an exchange. Now how they should be doing an exchange. The first thing is what we can do is that let us, there will be only one exchange that is given to you. So let us try to iterate over Alice boxes of candies and one by one we'll check that whether if Alice gives the first box if Alice gives the first box what is the candy that Bob should give so that they both will become equal okay we have the final final point at which we should reach the final state that we should reach we have the current state if Alice gives the ith box we will iterate over every box of i because they will be giving out only one box so what we'll do is we'll iterate over every box of Alice i and let's say that Alice give the ith box. If Alice give the ith box, Alice has a total sum. It gives the ith box so to subtract from this. But eventually they want to reach a final state in which they have equal amount. So this is the final needed. So this total final needed state minus the amount of candy, like candy Alice gives from the total sum will gives you what is the amount of candy it should receive to reach this final state. Hope you get the point. So. Alice has given something and it will also receive something. So how much Alice should be receiving to reach the final state after giving the is candy. Now, if Alice give this candy to Bob or Bob will also give you something. Now, Bob should be giving that much of candy so that Alice should reach this final state. So I, I know that this final state is other. I have stored in this, in this variable. So I just check that whether this other type of candy is present in Bob's candy collection or the different candy boxes we have. So we, what we can do is to make it more quicker, we can just make a map out of all the candies present with Bob and we can just check in the map or you can also make a set, not met like a set, multi set because they can multiple same candies as well. But if a candy is present with Bob that Alice wants, then uh, Bob can give that candy to Alice and Alice is giving one candy to Bob and eventually because we decided that this is the final state, and this is the final state Alice will reach. So eventually Bob will also reach the final state because uh, the candies are same only. Like they are a fixed collection of candies only. So what we'll want to is that if Alice is giving the IS candy, it should be re receiving this other amount of candy from Bob so that Alice will reach the final needed state. And for that candy to be received by Bob, you have to actually check that whether that candy, that amount of candy Bob should have. So we will check then in the map that whether the amount of candy Bob have, if it has that particular candy, then we got the answer that Alice will give this higher candy, Bob will get this or this other candy and both of them are fine. So we just make an 
like because you have to return what amount of candy Alice and Alex should give and Bob should give. So we just return an array of the candy that is Alice should be giving and the Bob should be giving and that's it. So it will always occur this state. So this will be returned always. And this is a zero comma zero. I'm just in like just to make this function more clean. That's why it is returned. But this condition will never hit because it's a uh, the condition is like for every case it will always hit. And then uh, we have just make an unordered map. We just checked it whether a particular candy is present with Bob for a particular candy given by Alice. Okay, that's our logic. So coming down to diagonal city, we have done an O of n to find out the sum. This O of n make an unordered map. Then we have done a for loops O of n. So it is all together O of n only for doing this whole operation. If you are using a map, it will be O of n log n, but that's not much of a deal because it will be solved in that time city as well. So that's the overall logic and the code part for this particular problem. If you still have any doubts, you can message me on the comment box of this particular problem. Thank you for watching video till the end. I will see you in the next one. Daily coding and bye.